Well, go ahead and open your Bibles, if you will, to the um, first book of John, fifth chapter. I'll read our foundation text. We're teaching on what to do when faith seems weak and victory lost. Hallelujah. Now look, this is not an original sermon. Dad Hagen did. He's got a book called What to Do with Faith Seems Weak and Victory Lost. Um, but then Dad got it from, you know, looking, you know, I say got it. The points came out of Dake's Annotated Bible. There's a section there that says what the 10 things to do when faith, faith seems weak and victory lost. You know, revelation, there is no revelation of private interpretation. If it's Bible, it's open to anybody who will just study the Scriptures and yield to the teacher. Can you say amen? amen? But even if it was dad's, and I've just read his book, it'd help you. I know one pastor uh, started an organization, a guy named Jim Caseman. When he started out, uh, now he has well over 600 churches and ministers under him. I think it's probably in a thousand now, over a thousand down. He started his church. He just take Dad Hagen's books. I'll show up on Sunday morning. He stand in front of him, open up a book and read it, and say, "Okay, let's go home." That's all he knew. He wouldn't even he couldn't even preach, and so he just read the books. You know what? Faith comes, faith comes, revelation comes, it helps people. I don't care how they get it. If we can get it to them by reading somebody's book, we'll get it to them. Because what we want to do is help people. Amen? 1 John 5, 4 says, Whatsoever is born of God, are you born of God? Amen. Then guess what? Overcometh. You are designed by God to overcome. Say that with me. Say, I am designed by God to overcome the world. Go ahead. My spiritual DNA is the DNA of a victorious life. Hallelujah. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And so we're looking at this, and we began to just look at things. Uh, the first thing is to recognize the source. There are two things when you recognize the source. You need to recognize the source of the problem, and you need to recognize the source of the answer. You get those mixed up, you're in trouble. Now, if you think, are you here? If you think God is the source of the problem and that your defeat is the answer, you're in trouble. You'll never know victory. I mean, you got people going around teaching that God's making people sick and anybody lays hands on them, getting healed of the devil. People actually teach that. Well, then you're in trouble if you're trying to get healed. <clears throat> if you believe that God has some ulterior motive in making you sick, then it's hard for you to pray in faith for him to take it off of you. Amen? So, so you understand that we've got to recognize the right source. That was the first point. Second was be sure you have promises from God's Word that cover what you're asking for. You can't believe, you cannot believe. Bible faith, now, now you know, some people say, well, I can believe. Bible faith cannot believe outside the parameters of the Word of God. You cannot believe for something that you cannot find a supportive scripture for. That's not Bible faith. Why? Because Romans says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Therefore, if it's going to be Bible faith, it's got to be Bible based. You know, we had some Looney Tunes back in the heyday. You know, they're going around believing for everything. I'm believing God for a million dollars. They couldn't believe God for 25 cents. And that's being gracious. Hello? Hey, believe in God for other people's cars and houses and lands. Believe in God for people's wives and husbands. Well, there's a lot of Scripture about all that stuff, and it ain't good. <laughs> Hello? So be sure you find Bible promises that cover. Why? Because the Bible, listen, you know what? We, we kind of make this statement. Um, we, a lot of people want to go and find something, take it to God and say, Lord, bless my mess. The truth of the matter is, if you go to God with His Word, it's already blessed. You don't have to get him to bless his word. His word's already blessed. You just line up with it and get it working in your life. Again, you know, the, the, we, we didn't really say this when we we're teaching this, but I, as I was kind of just refreshing here, um, the word covenant in the New Testament Greek, one of its meanings is, is to say the same thing as. In other words, to come into agreement. 
We're in a covenant with God. When we, when we, we come into an agreement, we say the same thing. And let me say this. God's, God's word and God's uh, statements are final authority. Amen. You don't get to override them. You don't get to come up with your own deal and say, well, uh, like one, I heard one minister's wife say this one time. They said, I give God ideas. Baloney. And he likes my ideas. Double baloney. Hello? You don't, how are you going to give God an idea and say, come up with something he hadn't come up with? I mean, that's, ar that's arrogance gone to seed. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something, brother, brother so-and-so almost snatched off the platform. But because he loved her husband, he didn't do it. And I'm not going to say who it was. I was there. I was in the meeting. <laughs> they were sitting up there talking, and she said that. He ran up there, grabbed him by the shoulders, pulled him back away from the mic, stuck his head up to the mic, and he went. Uh, they just flew in. They're tired. They're going to the hotel to get rest. We'll see you all tonight. Yeah. Wham! <laughs> They shut it down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, bull in the china shop. I don't want, that's as far as I'm going to go. Hallelujah. Then, then we talked about, some of y'all know who it is. Now I just said that. <clears throat> Never backed up for anything. Amen. Hallelujah. Third thing, the next thing we talked about was be sure you're not living in sin. Now, I know under some of the teaching today, or, or at least some of the extremes that people are, are coming out with, and, and listen, some people say, oh, we don't teach that. I, I, I know of a case right here in our own area where a couple came in for counseling, they're not married, and said, it doesn't matter, we're living together because we're under grace. That's what they told the pastor. Yeah. He said, he said, you know, the reason you're having problems with relationship is you're living together, living in sin. He said, oh, no, that don't matter, we're under grace. Well, you know, it does matter. Be sure you're not living in sin. In other words, if there's, make sure you, clean, you look in your life and see if there's anything. Go on. Sin will inhibit. Sin is an inhibitor. Sin is a separator. And beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence right. towards God. Right. The, first place, the first place sin will cause, in, cause a problem is in your own heart. Right. It'll, it'll destroy your confidence with God. That's exactly right. So we want to get sin out of our life. Amen? We talked about that last week. And then I think last Sunday night we talked about uh, be sure there's no doubt or unbelief permitted in your life. Now, I know you can kind of say, well, doubt and unbelief is sin. But just for the sake of this, you know, I know what serves is not faith is sin. But we can't let doubt, we can't let questioning that God will do what he said he was going to do enter in. So today we're going to get to the next point. Let's go over to Mark 11. Now, last week we did Mark, we, I think we did Mark 11, 23, um, you know, we talked about that, and we, this kind of ties into it. Dove tells him, be sure, no doubt or unbelief is printed in your life. Today, de sincerely desire the benefit. <clears throat> you can't go at this happen, happen chance. You can't go at this kind of, you know, well, I'm going I'm to I'm give that face up a try. Come on now. you got to have some uh, commitment have strong desire. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's very interesting. Sometimes you will see the words desire. Actually, the word desire in the Greek can be translated lust. Actually, the word desire and the word lust do come from the same Greek word. Uh, it, it means, you know, lust is simply a strong desire in the wrong place. And when you use, when you, we really use the word the way we, we use the word lust, it is it is the same thing. It's the same passion. It's the same strength as a, as a, as a desire. It's just lust is an ungodly desire. Okay, I mean now even even the King James uses it when it says the spirit lust of the envy. You know, it's talking about the strong desire and things. So understand. Um, and so how, don't don't raise your hand, but you know you how many have ever lusted before? Well, then, that, if you have that desire, that same kind of passion and that same kind of uh, obsession, as it were, for the things of God, that's desire. That's godly desire. Yeah. Okay? Right. So, be, you know, just surely desire the benefit. Let's look again at Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. Jesus answering, answering and saith unto them, have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith, or the faith of God. There's you know, different translations of that, that particular phrase. For verily, that, the word verily is, is, is a Elizabethan term for a solemn oath. You swear. Okay? Um, I say unto you that whosoever, we have four whosoever this morning, 
whosoever, right. let's do the old, uh, old hymn, whosoever surely meaneth me. <laughs> Amen. How many remember that song in the church? Whosoever surely meaneth me. Glory to God. Shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. Look at verse 24. Therefore. Now see, like I say, if you see the word therefore, look, check it out and see what, what it's there for. Amen. Therefore I say unto you. So in other words, if you have faith in your heart and no doubt in your heart and you speak, you get answers. And that's, so he says, because of that principle of believing, not doubting, and saying what things soever ye desire. Everybody say desire. desire. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. In other words, there's a principle here that says, if you believe it in your heart and you don't doubt and you say it, there's a principle. Now, you apply that principle of believing, not doubting, and saying to things you desire. See, it's not just the principle, it's got to be applied to something. And the principle is applied to the things you earnestly desire, have a strong desire for. I'm going to tell you, if you just kind of pray, you know, well, Lord, heal my body in Jesus' name, and you're just kind of, well, I'm going to take the pills, and it's going about your business, and not even think about it, and not even be using your faith, you know. But I'm going to tell you what, if they tell you you're going to die next week, I bet there'll be a whole lot of people who get a strong desire. <laughs> Hello? Sometimes the degree of the situation you're facing determines how much desire you get into it with. We all know that. You'll see people who get healed of, you know, life-threatening things and won't get healed of a headache. Their desire is exercised. They, they apply the principles, but what things serve you desire. See, you've got to earnestly desire the thing. And then it says that when you pray, now the word pray is the same word used over in, um, oh, um, James, where James says you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. The word ask in that passage and the word pray here both, all, both come from the same Greek word ateo, A-I-T-E-O, I believe, meaning to pray or to ask. So, what things shall you desire when you ask? We, we, they put pray here, but it's really, it's the same word, okay? Same, same Greek word. So, when you ask, see, because we pray, prayer, when, this is a form of prayer, is to ask God for things. Now, the religious world is, is prayer, not my will, but your will be done. Oh, God, if it's your will, let me have it. If not, let, teach me to put up with this so I can make it through somehow, some way. Moving by some hook or crook. That's not prayer. That's plant feeding. Some of y'all are going to get that eventually. I said, that's plant feeding. Y'all hear? What do you mean? When you exhale, we exhale carbon dioxide, and that's what plants use to feed off of. And if you're just saying that kind of stupid stuff, you're just feeding the plants because that ain't prayer. You're just exhaling and putting carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So don't be a plant feeder. Don't waste your breath feeding the plants. If you're going to feed the plants, make it effective. Amen? All right. So he says here, what things shall ye desire? Amen? Proverbs 2, 3, 2 and through 5 says this, For length of days and long life and peace shall, be, shall uh, they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of the heart. So thou shalt find favor and good understanding. Um, in the sight of God, man, trust in the Lord with all, here are, all thy heart, or thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all. See, there's that desire. All. You can't do it halfway. I said, you can't do it halfway. There have been, there have been basketball teams or football teams or athletic teams they had more talent than anybody in the world, but they ran into a team with a lot of desire. And the team with a lot of desire won. Just check out the Wake Miami game yesterday. Now, Wake just didn't pull one off barely. They beat them by 15. They're unranked un and got a losing record. Miami was ranked number two in the country, top of the ACC, undefeated. They ran into somebody who had a stronger desire than they did.
See, you got a strong enough desire. It causes you to rise above your inabilities. And I can tell you, when you get a strong enough desire for things from God's Word, you'll rise above the realm of unbelief and doubt. Come on. You'll rise into that realm where you're, 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 giving it, you're, you're getting after it, man. You're getting into the Word. You're feeding on the Word. You're saying, I, I, I want this thing. <laughs> Glory to God. Won't let go of it. We've got to get back to where we won't let go of the things of God. Now, let's, us old Pentecostals, we used to have some expressions that we kind of took a slam for during the Word of Faith heyday. You know, I mean, we 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 grab a hold of stuff and say, I'm I'm praying through and I'm hang, and I and I'm hanging on, not letting go, and all kinds of and and, and some of the things they meant when you when you took it semantically and then or just uh, pray, lined it up to the word, we just slammed them. Or I slammed us because I'm from that camp too. I came out of the Pentecostals, came over above the charismatic word of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. We tried to mix the best of both worlds. But a lot of things we said were, 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 were things they had experienced but didn't understand doctrinally. You get a bunch of old Pentecostals, they'll plead the blood and the heartbeat and get answers. Amen. Praying through. Let's see, we would slam them for praying through. All you got to do is say in the name of Jesus and you're through. There are some things you just got to have some tenacity about yeah. and stay in there <clears throat> until you get an answer. I remember uh, Lynn Hammond when I was listening to her teach on a, on a tape, and she said she was praying about something. Pray about it six months. And said so she just couldn't get an answer. Just, I mean, just every time she tried to pray about that, it's just like her, and she beating her head against the wall. Well, are you are. She didn't have enough faith. So she called Brother Hagan and said, Dad, said, uh, I haven't prayed about this. I've been praying about six months about it. said, I just can't get through. He, and he didn't even waste any time. He said, that's because the Holy Ghost didn't hook it up with you. Yep, the Holy Ghost didn't hook it. You know, he takes hold together with us. Well, if he ain't taking hold together with you, you need to find out why. <laughs> Amen. You know, Dad used to say that, he, and see, he, was, he, was real, he was real bold about this. And, you know, you think, well, you know, when you get to a certain age, you can say stuff, and it doesn't, it doesn't mess people up. Some of us young guys, we say, ah, he's going to have any faith. Of course, when Brother Hagin's proving out he had faith, you can't say that. But he'd say, he'd say I'd, I'd pray about something. If I didn't get an answer, I'd say, Lord, I've missed it somewhere. You can't miss it. Your word can't miss it. But I've missed it somewhere. There's a lot of people who won't admit that. Oh, you're right. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Don't want to admit that I missed it somewhere. Well, if you don't, and you don't let the Lord talk to you, how are you going to adjust it and fix it? It's like sitting down messing with a car that you don't know how to fix. And somebody, and there's a, and there's a master mechanic sitting over there on the front porch drinking lemonade and, and, or, or some uh-huh. Anybody know what uh-huh is? Half lemonade, half sweet tea. Where'd that come from? I, so I, uh, uh, so I heard somebody say one time, they, they, asked her, they asked her husband, said, you want lemonade or tea? And they said, uh-huh. <laughs> and so they, they, they started calling it uh-huh. Gave them both. They called it uh-huh, and they loved it. Hallelujah. So they get over there drinking some uh-huh, and, um, you know, somebody comes in and says, what's going on? Well, I'm trying to fix the car. Well, well um, if, what are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Another one say that. Said, I'm, I'm, I'm holding fast my tool. <laughs> I'm being diligent to get it done. And the master mechanic sitting on the porch. And we got to learn to go, if I'm, not getting, if I'm not getting anywhere, we better invoke him and get him involved. Because <clears throat> he can walk over there and go, well, the problem is you got your, your wrench on the wrong nut. You're supposed to be over here. Hello. And if you're unloosing this one, the whole thing will come off. Well, I knew that. I, I, I knew that. No, you didn't. <laughs> Hello? No, you didn't. That's why you spent three hours, and he came over and did it in two seconds. We've got to get back to understanding God knows more than us. Amen? And when we sincerely, sincerely desire something, if we're not getting answers and we're not getting ahead, we need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, Lord, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm I'm doing all I know to do, but I must be, am I missing, where, where am I missing it? What's going on here? You know what? He'll tell you if you're open. Now, I'm going to say something. I'm going to upset some folk. And I know I'm going to upset a bunch of folk out there on the Internet. Just go ahead and get ready. 
Now, if you don't want to be upset, turn us off and go, go watch reruns of JAG or something. All right? A lot of times, people don't want to ask God where they're missing it is. They don't want to hear it because they already know and they're not willing to change it. That was good preaching. Hallelujah. You know it's so. On the inside of you, you already know what needs to be done, but you don't ask the Lord because then he'll tell you. <coughs> or he'll say, you know. You know. I've already been dealing with you for three weeks about that, and you won't listen. If the Holy Ghost don't hook up with you, you've got to find out why. Amen. Sometimes it's, it's that what you're believing for isn't in the Bible. You can have a strong desire for something that's not in the Bible, and then you ain't going to get it. Not from God. Like the girl called me that one time and tell me that God assured her she was going to marry this man in the church. And after questioning her for a little while, because she couldn't call her pastor and talk to her pastor, after questioning her for a little while, finally got her to open it and admit he was married. Told her she had a pizza dream. Because that came from indigestion. It didn't come from God. Why was she going through the phone book, calling churches and trying to get them? She was trying to get a minister to condone what she already knew in her heart was wrong. That's why she couldn't go to her pastor with it. So she just tried to come up with somebody else, give them partial information, and get their approval. I ain't stupid. You know, when I say, well, why haven't you gone to your pastor? And, and well, I can't go to him with this. Red flag. Hello. Come on now. All right. So we have to have strong desires, but if those strong desires, we need to make sure that it's, it's God involved, that we, we're, we're giving him all of our heart. Amen. We're, we're, we're trusting him with all of our heart. You can't trust with him all of your heart if you know something's wrong in what you're doing. Now, I'm not talking about sin in the sense you're out doing, actively doing stuff wrong. I'm talking about knowing in your heart the path you're pursue, pursuing, the things you're trying to believe for, the way you're going, isn't what God wants for you. There's not, it's not something he's leading you to do. You're trying to make it happen. Hello? Like in who you marry. Some folks marry people they know they ain't supposed to marry. Hello. Thank you. I'm just going to leave that one there. Just drop it out of boom. Boom, boom. Y'all here, you're going home. I see, yeah. <laughs> and then some folks make the quadruple sure it's the right thing. <laughs> Take some years. Just go on and on and on. Like, my God, will you ever hear from heaven? <laughs> but he finally did, didn't he, Janice? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picking on Jerry. I love to pick on Jerry about that. <laughs> he makes me think of that movie, uh, In Harm's Way, um, um, with John Wayne. And, um, and uh, the, the woman, the, the, the two nurses are talking about, and uh, the nurse says, well, you, you invited him over? She said, yeah, when men get to a certain age, I found out the women got to make the move. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of one of those allegories I kind of put. Anyway, I'm just besting on you, Jerry. I'm just besting on you, brother. He's going, my God, my God, hallelujah. Amen. 2 Timothy 1.5 says this, When I have called to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which was first in thy grandmother Lois, thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee, persuaded that in thee also. Unfeigned means sincere. You've got to have a sincere desire for the things you're pursuing after God. Find the scriptures to support it. Go after it in faith. Lay hold of it. Have the tenacity of a dog with a new bone. You, mean, you ever try to take a bone away from a dog that just got the bone? You better have on steel lined gloves. Because most dogs are going to take your hand if you mess with their bone. Hello? They don't like giving up their bones. It's just the nature of dogs. I, I got a beagle. We, we, we beat her enough when she was young. She doesn't nip or growl or snarl at us when we try to mess with her food. Because we, we trained her young. But if you get one that had been trained, they'll bite your hand. Good try. Good. Let's see what a pit bull. Especially Spike. He's got the collar on with the spikes so he can't get to his neck. Yeah. 
if we, now let me say this, as a Christian, it's hard for us to sincerely desire benefits that we know aren't in the Bible. It really, it really is. Your heart will tell you, you can't believe for that. And well, I can have what I say. I read Brother Hagin's book, I can have what I say. Read his other ones too. Hello? There's more there. He taught more things than the, than, than the isolated thing that maybe they put in the book that, that goes on a foundation, not just out by itself. Amen? How do we feel with the Holy Spirit? Well, some sinner gets a hold of that. And, you know, it doesn't apply to them. Why? They're not born again yet. They've got to be born again to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, you know, some, some things, we've got books that are written, and they're built on foundations. They're not standalone. Number one, they stand on the Bible. If you can't stand on the Bible, you don't need it. Right. Amen. You know, take a sermon or whatever and, and take it out of its context and whatever. You can build all kinds. Of, well, you know, I remember a number of years ago, somebody was going around. The, there was a book out. Um, it, was a song, it was actually a song written by uh, Dottie Rambo called Holy Spirit, Thou Art Welcome in This Place. Look, I mean, a song. Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, ah, Thou art welcome in this place. Somebody went out and started teaching because of the song that the Holy Spirit is the Father. Had a book. You wrote, read the book, they said they quoted the song <laughs> for their foundation. Folks, the song isn't the foundation. Right, right. And it, it, was, it was a song that had to be understood within the context of the Bible. It, it, it did not supersede the Bible. Well, the Holy Spirit inspired her to write that song, and therefore it's doctrine almost. I mean, that's how they did it. The books had to come out of our bookstore because it was it was wrong doctrine, messing people mess people up. The Holy Spirit's not the Father; He's the third person of the Godhead. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost in that order, and they are not. Listen, they are equal. They are. It's a, you know the understanding of the Trinity is is you just have to get over it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because it's a spiritual thing, and you don't understand it with natural minds. But let me say something. The Bible teaches us that, they, that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, though uniquely one, are separate and distinct offices and, and aspects of God. Amen. Jesus actually came as the Son and took on flesh yeah. in obedience to the will of the Father. And then when he went back, he, he and the Father sent the Holy Ghost. The Father didn't send himself. He sent the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So, how did I get off on all that? It was good anyhow, it wasn't it? I said it was good anyhow, wasn't it? Amen. All right. So we have to have we have to have sincere faith. Remember the remember the sincere faith. Like uh, that's what I was saying. You can't you can't have a sincere faith if you know it's not in the, the will of God, mm -hmm. right. or you question it's the will of God. You're not sure. Now, if you're not sure, go find out the Bible promises it. So you can have a sincere desire for it. Amen. Because until you do, until you sell that. I, you know, I, I, listen, I was listening to one of Dad's uh, old um, <coughs> tapes from, or, you know, from your, I've got a, I've got a bunch of, uh, of his stuff on MP3. And um, I was listening to him teach from, from some, some from years ago, back when, back when uh, you know, talking about when Pat and, and uh, Pastor Pat Harrison, which was, you know, his son-in-law, I mean, his daughter-in-law, his daughter, Buddy's wife, so Buddy Harris was his son-in-law, and then but Pat and Ken were the, were, the, were the children. But you know she had gotten this growth growing on her eye. It was it was growing. It was kind of it's kind of a, a gorder tumor looking thing. And uh, Sister Aretha wrote him and said, you know Pat's got this. The doctor says you need to do something about it. Or it's going to get bigger, bigger, bigger. And um, you know and so we had to take us some specialists. And the specialist says no, this isn't something that you can. This is a, if, if we don't do something about it, it's just going to get bigger, bigger and bigger, and and and, and it can't just keep coming back or whatever. So he just. He out preaching healing all the time, out laying hands on the sick all the time, out believe, you know, out doing what he's doing all the time. But he took extra time 
<clears throat> to go get back in work. At night, he'd lay down. When he got done with all the other stuff, all of his praying about the meetings and all that, he'd just lay there in bed and he'd start meditating on the scriptures for him to believe God for his daughter. He had to refresh himself for himself. And sometimes we're not willing to do that. Ah, oh, well, Pastor Ed said that's good enough for me. That's not good enough for you. Just because Pastor Ed said that could put you in the right direction, but that's not good enough for you to make it with. Right. Amen. Notice that Paul said here, uh, um, he said, talked about the unfeigned faith that was in, in Timothy's grandmother, Lois, in his mother. Hello. And when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, the sincere faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Notice he said, it was in your grandmama. It was in your mama. But I'm persuaded it's in you. He didn't tell him to stand on grandmama uh, Lois's faith, did he? Or Mama Eunice's faith. The sincere faith you have has to be in you also. Amen. And for you to sincerely desire the benefit means you're going to have to be sincerely uh, active and sincerely per, uh, pursuing the faith of God that's in the Word of God, that comes from the Word of God. Why? So you can you can win. You're not going to win because you come to Faith and Victory Church. We've had people come here and lose. That went over big. We've had people come here and lose. Some came too late. You couldn't get enough into them. In the amount of time they had, you tried. You wanted to. But see, they've got to sincerely desire the benefit. You can show it to them. You, and if, if you don't have a manifestation of the gift of the Spirit, of the gifts of the Spirit, you can't get it for them. Hello? Are you here? And you try, and you go, and you minister, and you tell them what to do. You got to do this. You know, and some people will do it, and some people won't. I've had results where they did, and they got it. Had results where you tried, and they didn't. And they didn't get it. Why? Because you got to sincerely, sincerely desire. You got to have a sincere desire that you want that benefit, and you're going to get to the Word, and you're going to do whatever it takes. Get that faith in you to get the answer you need to get that benefit. Amen. Tell a kid, look, if you'll cut the yard all summer every week, I'll give you $300. You can buy that, whatever it is you want to buy for $300 at the end of the summer. You'll find a house in Syria are about getting what they want. Hello? Mm -hmm. You'll find out real quick. You know what I'm saying? And if you go out there on that first Saturday and they're in bed, kind of like Nathan looks. You still know I need to take a picture put it on Facebook. Anyway, especially now he's got his hair a little bit longer. It, it, it gets kind of really, you ought to see it in the mornings. It's a sight. And this is a tough being the pastor's kid. It? You, get, you take it on the chin all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> but I'll tell you what, if I say, Nathan, you, know, you want a shotgun that's going to cost you $300. Hey, if you'll cut the grass every Saturday morning for all summer and not miss any Saturdays. At the end of summer, I'll give you the money and you can go buy it. And if I go in there on Saturday morning and he's, he's still asleep, I say, Nathan, you, you, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be 102 today. Now, you need, if you cut the grass, you need to do it this morning. And he comes strolling out of bed about one o'clock. And he Dad, it's too hot. And I'll wait till this evening when it cools off. Okay. All right, buddy. Sun goes down. Where's he at? He's up at the neighborhood pool. Because it's hot. And it, go, it cools down to 93. He goes, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it Monday, Dad. Okay. <laughs> Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Can I get a mulligan for last week? And Saturday gets here, you have a scoffing term, you know, can I, can I get a, you know, mulligan for last week? Okay, son. Now, he, he gonna come to me about the end of the summer and say, hey, I'm ready to go shopping for the shotgun, Dad. Well, son, you only cut the grass four times. Yeah. <laughs> I said every week all summer. See, he thought he was going to get it without the effort. He didn't sincerely desire it. He wanted it. You all hear he wanted the shotgun. I can tell you he does want a shotgun. Sure. 
All right? But he didn't sincerely desire it because he wasn't willing to pay the price of what I laid down of the requirements were to get it. He was just hoping that if he, if he put a little effort out there, I'd give in and give it to him. Not. No, I'll work my own job. That was a job. Now, this didn't happen. I'm just, I'm saying, but he said, I'll work my own job. Because he didn't want to cut the grass. He didn't want to do what I said I would do to get, in the, to get in the shotgun. God has things in his word to say, if you'll do this, I'll do that. If you'll feed on the word, if you'll meditate in the word, then you'll have good, you'll make your way prosperous and have good success. Well, I don't want to have to meditate. It's just too hard. I just, I mean, I just, you know what, I just, I want to go hear somebody preach on Sunday morning and, and, and get the answer. You're not sincerely, sincerely desiring the benefit. If you're going to get answers from heaven, if you're going to have victorious faith, if your faith is not going to be weak, amen, if you're not going to have lost victory, you're going to have to get back to having a sincere desire for the things that you want in life and get into that word and feed on that word until you can go get it. Amen. And instead of sleeping until noon and then putting it off till next week. Amen. Yeah. See, I can pick on Nathan because he, he's got to love me because he wants to come home and eat. <laughs> he loved to eat, so he go, he's, gonna, he's just going to put up with it. Or I'll cut off the food. Yeah, you just, you know, you're a parent. You've got to know where to, where, where to hurt him at. <laughs> I'll cut off his food supply. I'll cut off his knee-high orange in the glass bottle supply. That'll get him. So you don't even want me to do that. He loves them. Anybody had a knee high orange in the glass bottle with the real sugar? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Nathan, Nathan has a has a IV bottle by his bed. <laughs> you go in there at night and there's one stuck up there on top of it. <laughs> Sincerely desire the benefit. Let's get back to where that where our faith is sincere. That we're going to the Word, we're getting answers from the Word, we're knowing what the Word says about it, and we're pursuing it from a, from a heart, a heart faith that says, I'm after this, I'm going to get my answer. I'm going to have the tenacity of a dog with a new but I'm not letting go of this. And if it doesn't look like something's working, I'm going to go to God and say, now, am I missing it somewhere? Because unless I'm missing it somewhere, I've got this. This is mine. Amen? Sometimes God will tell you you need to tweak something. Mm -hmm. Amen? He might say you got the, you got the wrong, he could tell you, you got the wrong motive. Oh, well, what, what's my where's my motive wrong? Da 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 da. da. Oh, I, I'm making an adjustment on that. And the Lord told Dad Hagen one time. He went to the Lord and said, "You know, Lord, I, I, I'm uh, I'm I'm being obedient. I'm doing what you told me to do. I'm I'm sacrificing time with my family. I'm doing this. I'm doing that." And the Lord spoke to him and says, "Yeah, but you're not willing." What? He said, "Lord, you dealt me a low blow." Yeah, sucker punched him. That's, that's that would be what we say now. What do you mean? He said, you're not willing. He said, the Bible says, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Being obedient wasn't enough. See, so if, you're not getting, if you're sincerely desiring something, and you're going after it, you've got to make sure you tweak it with the Lord if you're not getting results. Lord, am I missing, where am I missing this? You know, I desire it. I'm, I'm putting the word in. And he might say, well, you know, you had the wrong attitude about it. You wanted to prove to somebody that you could get something done instead of just because it's, it's, it's Bible and you're following after me with the right heart. See, we don't do anything to prove to other people we can believe God. It's the wrong motive. You're not believing God for the right way. You know, it's like somebody going, well, I, you know, I can prove to you healing works and I'm going to get people healed. Well, and you're going to make a fool of yourself. Jesus didn't go around healing, going people, watch me, I'm the Son of God. Rise. Not once do we have a record of him doing that. Twelve of the 19 different healings in the New Testament involving the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, thy faith has made thee whole. There are 32 or 31 recorded healings in the Gospels, but the 19 of them are different. 12 of them are overlaps from, different, from the synoptics and so forth. And of the 19, 12, Jesus gave direct credit to the faith of the believer as to why they were healed. 
We got to get back to being sincere about. It. I'm going to tell you something. If we don't stop Mickey Mouse and playing, <clears throat> we're not going to get answers. We got to get back to being serious about the things of God and having the right heart towards them. Amen.